Take two. This time I've got the microphone on the same side of the room at, with me. So that'll probably help. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to do a, a little wrap up here for the month of horror. Um, and in the uh, next day or two, I'll do a, a, a list of possibles and list of uh, the events I'm going to join. But wrapping up the two events I've been working most on this month. I mean, I tried to continue spring into adventure. But I didn't get very far. In fact, I don't think I even read any adventure books. Because I was going to go back and read. There's, I could do a whole video on stuff I wanted to read that I didn't read. Like The Wrong Box by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, a couple of Conan Doyle uh, short novels I was recommended. <coughs> on and on and on. But starting first with the 100 book challenge where I read 100 books that are on my Kindle before I buy any new ones and I am up to number 38 which is not very far I read Echo de Carne it's a short story by Nicholas Francis who's an Argentine writer it's a good bridge between horror and uh, western because it's a weird western very violent uh, I showed the can I go back to that page? Probably probably doesn't matter. It was in the last one. No one's going to read it anyway. There's no English translation of it, so no one watching this channel is probably going to look for it. Although uh, Nicholas Francis has some of his books translated into English. He's an indie author. Then I read The Engines of Sacrifice by James Chambers. This is another indie novel. I mean, an indie collection that I've had for a long time. I'm trying. Sometimes I'm trying to go back and reconstruct where I got all these things. Uh, this one says, "This is take people back that have been reading indie books for a long time." It says, "Smash, smash words." Oh, brother. Yeah, there it goes. Smash word, smash words edition. Have I got? I gotta flip this thing. Oh, I guess I can't do it now. I think that might show up backwards. I forgot to flip the camera. Okay, it's four stories. Uh, Investigation 37, The Ugly Birds, The Hidden Room, and The Engines of Sacrifice, the title story. They were all really good, uh, especially the first two, uh, Investigation 37, which takes the form of a, a privatized report to a client about a missing uh, child and what happened, grandchild, and... Uh, it references it's it's set in uh, the in Southern California in the times of cults and stuff and in the seventies it kind of goes along with uh, Our Lady of Darkness in that sense it mentions the Tate Lobianca murders and stuff brings in a Cthulhu mythos kind of uh, background to all that uh, same thing The Ugly Birds is a good story in there it's apparently this fellow this guy here. I forgot his name already. James Chambers was started out writing comics, and he's written uh, he's written a lot of short stories since this. Um, but anyway, uh, Angry what was it called? Angry Birds? I don't want to get it wrong because there's there's the Ugly Birds. There's a famous science fiction story by Howard Waldrop called The Ugly Chickens. This is not that. <clears throat> the Ugly Birds is about a comic book artist who works for a, a magazine called Chill, which is like a low-end, if you can imagine such a thing, a low-end competitor to Creepy Magazine. And, you know, right at the end when all, when all those big black and white uh, trade size magazines like Vam Vampirella and Creepy and all those were just dying out. And he has uh, some... Cthulhu mythos-like adventures too. So what I want to say about that is I really enjoy the way this writer uh, picked interesting worlds to write about, you know, and to set his Cthulhu mythos stories in. It's a great job with atmosphere, and I did enjoy those stories very much, which was good because before that, and this was actually the third book I had tried to read by an indie author or a group of indie authors from, in a row, and the other two I just couldn't finish. They were so badly written. 
and I deleted them both entirely, which I, I'm now glad I did because I'd be tempted to to show the titles and shame the author. It's just very bad, written, uh, ex execrably incompetent, amateurish, uh, Lovecraftian fiction, which I have a lot of on here. I have a lot of these uh, indie, early indie published books, so it was nice to find a good one, which I did in The Engines of Sacrifice by James Chambers. However, the best book I read this week was Red Dragon, the first novel of Hannibal Lecter. It says here, it's a Hannibal Lecter novel. And who's who's a bigger, more famous villain than Hannibal Lecter since 1980? This book was written and published in 1980. You, know, you got Darth Vader, the first the Star Wars was in the 70s, 77, I think, right? Other than those, I guess Voldemort from uh, uh, Harry Potter later, who are, you know, who are household names, you know, uh, in a villainy, you know, equal to like the Joker or or, uh, or other comic book villains in, invented in the 30s and 40s. Um, and I had. Stupidly, in the last video I mentioned it, I called uh, this book Red Dragon, I called it Manhunter at least five times. I don't ever think I called it by the correct name in the video. Manhunter is, is the adaption, uh, the, the Michael Mann, the Michael Mann movie adaption of Red Dragon was called Manhunter. And it starred... It co-starred Brian Cox as Hannibal Lecter, and they used to show up quite a lot in trivia questions. Who was the first person to play Hann Hannibal Lecter? Like one, one of those quick kind of trick questions, like who's the first place in person to play James Bond? I'll let you Google that. No, I'll tell you, it's Barry Nelson. I'll let you Google why, but you probably know why. Um, and... I had said also in that video that I had seen every adaption of Red Dragon but never read the book. It's true I had never read the book, but I forgot that there was a second adaption under the original title, Red Dragon, that was done as a sequel, or prequel rather, shot later to Silence of the Lambs. They had an aged out Anthony, aged, de-aged Anthony Hopkins in it. I think he was de-aged. I only saw the... Uh, the, the trailer online it just didn't grab me because I, I love the movie so much and then of course I saw the the Hannibal TV series I saw the they had adapted Red Dragon for that so I knew a lot about the story even though the the Michael Mann movie is pretty faithful to the novel you know naturally some things are given more weight than others it's very interesting uh, to see Thomas Harris's background in here he was a journalist he only wrote, well, he could still write more books. He's in his early 80s. Uh, I read a little bit about him. He's written six books in his life, four about Hannibal Lecter. Before he wrote this book, Red Dragon was his second novel. His first book was uh, called Black Sunday. It was also made into a movie. It starred, I think, Bruce Dern as a villain who... It's got, it's got a, it's another high-concept novel. It's kind of, uh, you know, in the same vein of... Shooting for a bestseller um of the time, where it's got uh, somebody takes over the Goodyear blimp or something like the Goodyear blimp and holds the Super Bowl hostage. I think Bruce Dern played him in the movie. I do want to read that. That was his first novel. And then a few years later, came out with Red Dragon and then Silence of the Lamb and then two more Hannibal books and then his most recent book, which I came, I think it came out in 2019, is is, is his first standalone novel since Black. Sunday, you know, his first non-Hannibal Lecter novel since Black Sunday. Naturally, it got not as, not good reviews because people were mad that Hannibal Lecter wasn't in it. But what strikes me about these books, and it's really inventive, I think, uh, is if I had read Red Dragon when it came out or before there were movies or before they were branded as Hannibal Lecter novels. Let me see if I can go back to this this cover. It's not going to let me go. 
you know, a terrifying classic of Hannibal Lecter. You know, he's probably only in like like three chapters. He's referred to a lot more than that, but um, he's not the main villain. The main the main villain is a serial killer called uh, the, the press calls the Tooth Fairy. The hero is Will Graham, who's a uh, FBI profiler. Such a cliche, right? Well, not back then. Um, somebody had to start this genre, and he did such a great job of this, with this and Silence of the Lambs especially, that took over, took over, um, you know, people's minds, and there, there's so many imitations of these books out, good and bad. But anyway, this reads like, I mean, uh, in a way, this reads like a sequel, because Will Graham, the profiler, is he's already burnt out. He's already been, you know, he went through this terrible trauma ha having to catch uh, Hannibal Lecter. And this real does read like the sequel to an unwritten book. And I guess maybe one of the later books, maybe Hannibal, or maybe Hannibal Rising goes back and fills that in, which is the final one, which is about young Hannibal Lecter. It's a very interesting way to write the book. Instead of writing, I'll just have, first I'll write a book where this guy named Will Graham captures Hannibal Lecter, because it gives the world such an involved and rich backstory and the circle of characters that have been together and gone through a lot together, both as adversaries and as allies, you know, the other uh, FBI people who've worked on the case. So I really enjoyed it very much, um, although the plot was, you know, not didn't hold any surprises for me because the movies are so vivid and it sticks in my head. Another thing that was really interesting about this, if you remember the character, what's his name, Freddy, Freddy, you forget his first name, uh, the, um, the journalist, the sleazy journalist, Thomas Harris was a journalist before he started writing best-selling uh, novels. And you can really tell that journalism starts, stuff's very interesting. There's a lot of stuff about this sleazy magazine called The Tatler that Freddie works for, kind of a um, National Enquirer uh, supermarket tabloid, which don't exist anymore, or maybe they do. And, you know, the kind of advertising that those magazines would get and the kind of uh, people that would work there. So his his journalism background really enlivened that part of the book, too, as well as the research or, or whatever he did for FBI and Quantico and all that. So that there was a bit more of that than in the movies. So I enjoyed that. And I do want to read Science of the Lambs next, so I'll be reading some horror, some terror horror stuff as it when it comes in. I have Science of the Lamb on hold from the library for quite a long time now. You know, there's other books you can get easily from my library, but Science of the Lambs, you gotta wait. All right, so that brings me up to only 38 books done for the 100 book challenge. Which I've changed a bit, okay, because what another thing I did this week was go through my Kindle, actually I've done it over the last few weeks, and I really look at everything I've got on there. And I got rid of a bunch of free books that I know I'm never going to read. You know, like free downloads, uh, Gutenberg downloads. I'm not going to read all three volumes of the collected works of Thomas Brown. I read Urn Burial, and it's fantastic. Um, fantastic e ecological essay, but I'm not going to read all of them. So, and I had a lot of duplicates on there because I had a lot of those uh, Delphi editions, you know, like I'd have, I'd have like the Delphi Complete Dickens, the Delphi Complete Henry James, you know, on and on, uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, but I also would have a lot of individual copies of their novels too, and I didn't. So I and the ones I hadn't paid for, you know, like the the the, the Gutenberg editions of those of like David Copperfield or whatever. I deleted all those too because I don't need them because I've got one copy in my Delphi edition, and I can always download them again. So originally, when I started, I had uh, let's see if I can find this search page here. 
I had over 1,100 unread items. Oh, and then there's another thing I had. I had bought books on here that I've that I read that I just wanted to make sure I always had a an electronic copy of. Like the, for example, all the Fritz Li all the Fritz Leiber, Fafford, and the Great Mauser books, which I'm going to reread. But I had, but they were all marked as unread because. You know, I had, I had read them in print. So I had a lot of books here I'd actually read, even though they weren't showing up as read. So instead of, when I did all of that, this is going to be so ridiculous. Instead of having like almost 1,100 unread files, it turned out I have 572 unread books. Not, not, not bad. Not bad. I know people who have thousands of unread books. And I used to have, not thousands, but I had hundreds of, of unread print, print books, you know, and they're good to have. So I don't want to get down to zero. Um, so I'll be happy when I, when I read another 60 of these books. Uh, and then I think I'll be done with the Read What You Own Challenge. I don't think I'll do it again because I think I've learned my lesson I've learned my lesson, I promise, not to buy every book I see because it's a dollar fifty anymore. And I think I'm gonna be able to get through a lot of these um, in Garb August. I have a bunch picked out for that. I'm gonna do that in another video though. So that's basically my end of the month. I read a lot of horror. I there's a ton of stuff I didn't get to this month that I really regret not getting to. Um See if I can find any of it here. All those Ray Garten books I bought, you know, I've I've seventeen of them. I'm probably never going to read those those Ray Garten, uh, sleazy Ray, Ray Garten uh, redneck horror uh, novels. There are a lot of them have names like Trailer Trash Killer and stuff, and they might be good, but I'll probably never know. Uh, I didn't get to all Nightblood. I have two or three more Valancourt. Uh, Paperbacks from Hell I didn't get to. This Nightblood one is kind of a vampire novel. I didn't get to Elizabeth Angstrom's uh, vampire novel that I wanted to. I had these two Ramsey Campbell books I didn't even know I had, which I would have read right away that I didn't get to yet. Uh, Psychomania. It's an anthology. I think I read one story out of there. Um... Where the heck is it? Oh, everything's on here now, so. My Kindle's still playing tricks on me. It'll drop ahead. Oh, The Terror. That's the other book I really wanted to read this month. I, first, I missed out on the group read because uh, I just started too late. I mean, they, they would have they would have allowed me. I wasn't banned from it. Uh, but I wanted to get a, a numbers under my belt and do it at the end of the month, and then I just never got to it. The wrong box it was going to be, uh, uh, like I said, I think I said, wrong box and some other Robert Louis Stevenson I was going to do for uh, Spring into Adventure. That's done now for me, too, till next year. So coming up, there's some new events. I'm going to talk about those in my next video.